Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. It is Q&A Tuesday. So if you are just joining me, hello, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. Uh, I like sharing the things that I know, my tips and tricks for medical coding. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. I hope you hit the notification bell so you can be aware anytime I post anything new. If this video helps you, I hope you'll hit that uh, like button and I hope that you'll share it with others uh, so that they may benefit from these videos as well. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, Q&A Tuesday, all the questions that are submitted through comments, through email, through uh, Instagram. I take them all and I put them in one episode and here we are. Okay, so here we go. The first question, would you recommend someone to take a two year RHIT program, then the one to two semester uh, medical billing and coding for the CCS certification or one before the other? It really is going to depend on how long you want to be in school. What are your goals? So if you don't know, the RHIT is a Registered Health Information Technician. This is the associate's degree offered with the American Health Information Management Association. Um, then you have the CCS, which is a Certified Coding Specialist. That is the um, certificate, the certification uh, for AHIMA as well. Now, the thing is, it's going to depend. Obviously, two years, you're going to be in school a lot longer. Um, but the thing with the RHIT program is that you get externships. And with externships, you get to go out into the community and uh, work at certain places or whatever. And that's how you get your, your exiting experience. Uh, with that, that will give you connections. It will give you some, a little bit of hands-on experience, something that, you know, you can put down on your resume. Uh, when you are able to make these valuable connections, this will help you to get a job when you're brand new, especially if you're in a degree program. With the CCS, this is the gold standard of medical coding credentials. I will say this because I truly do believe this. This credential says, number one, that you can code both inpatient and outpatient coding. If you notice on some of the credentials, um, it's really geared towards the outpatient setting or the inpatient setting or some other specialty. So it really is going to depend on what credential. But with this particular credential, it is amazing because it says that you have both inpatient and outpatient training, that you know the rules to both, and that you basically can be dropped anywhere in a facility and be able to code, okay? Um, that may seem a little daunting at first, like really? Uh, but I don't have any experience. It's okay. If you've been trained as a medical coder, you should be able to, after uh, maybe a couple of days of reviewing the guidelines and reviewing the rules, you should be able to pick it up because the coding uh, foundation is the same, okay? So that's just my advice on that one. So again, it's gonna go back to your goals. It's gonna go back to what you wanna do. How fast do you wanna get out of school? Um, Having one over the other is not going to get you a job faster. Uh, it's really going to depend on you. It's going to depend on where you are. So it really, I mean, those factors go into it. Not every city is the same in terms of, of what their need is, okay? Uh, obviously, with the pandemic, it, it is going to change things a little bit because uh, we are in demand. I mean, we are always in demand, but we are going to be even more in demand because of the simple fact that now we have this sort of backlog of patients that hasn't been able to be seen in, in these weeks that we've been all on lockdown. Um, there is some patients right now that are being seen like emergencies and things like that. We are starting to see the, the, the country open up again as far as like uh, doing surgeries and things like that. So there is going to be a little bit uh, more patients going to be seen. But think about this. All of this time we've been in lockdown, you know, in come December, there's going to be a huge baby boom because, you know, people were doing their thing uh, during the lockdown. So it's, it's going to be there. The need is going to be there. So whether you go with the RHIT, RH, uh, the CCS or any other credential, it is going to be beneficial, but it really is going to be on you and how um, stubborn you are when it comes to looking for a job because you will be told no a lot in the beginning. Uh, I talk about this all the time. I'm very upfront when it comes to this. All medical coders go through this. I think it's, 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 it's a waste when you have people who are really good and sometimes they won't even be given a chance because they don't have experience yet. How do you get experience if no one will hire you? 
it's just going to take a lot, a lot of knocking on doors and a lot of being told no and a lot of being stubborn, essentially, until you get your first job. So it's not impossible to get a job, but it is going to take some work. So again, it really does go back to, do you want to spend a couple of years in school or do you want to spend um, a few months training uh, to get your certification, get your certification and then go out in the real world? It's entirely up to you. Okay. Next question. Uh, do you know if financial aid will pay for online programs for medical coding? I have never been through financial aid. Uh, I went through the WIOA program to get my schooling paid for. So I didn't have to go through all this uh, student loans and grants and all this other stuff. I didn't go through that. They, they helped me with the paperwork and we did it that way. Uh, so you're going to have to go and look for the financial aid people and then ask them, you know, or, or see if what program uh, you want to go through. Okay. Um, again, you have to ask those questions because I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, next question is, what is the hardest part about medical coding? If you are a student asking this question, you're asking the wrong question. Even if you are a medical coder and you're asking this question, you're still asking the wrong question. Your question should be rephrased like this. Uh, what do I need to study more? Uh, if, if you're being trained and you're being trained well, you are going to have these questions. Don't look at medical coding as it's hard. If you do that, you, you've already lost the race, okay? This is a marathon, it is not a sprint. If you are looking to see what is the hardest part, what may be hard for me may be, not be difficult for you. What may be difficult for you may be a cakewalk for me. So it's going to be different for everybody. Don't ask that question to yourself. Ask, I, well, I need to learn, I need to, I need to study, I need to study hard. Because every, every subject for everybody is gonna be different. Some people cannot stand orthopedics, injury coding, they can't stand it. I love it, that is my favorite, that is my favorite. Orthopedics and podiatry are my favorite. I will code anything, I can basically code anything, but when it comes to specialty coding, I really love orthopedics and podiatry. A lot of people hate it because they can't stand the injury coding. They don't get it. It's too hard. It's too hard. No, 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 no. You have to stop saying that word. You have to say it's too hard. No, get that out of your vocabulary. This is something that you have to learn. This is not something that is going to be easy. If it was easy, then everybody would do it but everybody can't do it because they don't want to do it because either they're, it's too much studying or they don't want to learn all this, other, all this other stuff. Uh, but I mean, it could be any number of reasons. Think about it, guys. Don't put that in your head, especially when you're studying. What is hard? There's nothing you need to study. Don't go into it thinking that it's going to be hard because you're asking the wrong question already. Okay. I'm just saying next question. Uh, do medical coding positions offer benefits? I don't know every place that is hiring. I don't know every place that offers benefits. I don't know what benefits they offer. I have seen some medical coding places that offer no benefits because it's like a contract position or I've seen uh, medical coding places that offer a slew of benefits. Every place is different. You've got to ask the people that you're applying with because I don't know. That is the one thing I don't know, like the specifics on like all that other stuff, you know, uh, like what are the benefits? What are the hours? Guys, ask the people that you're applying, you know, because that, they're going to be able to tell you, <laughs> you know. Next question. Um, oh, I have been working in prior authorizations. It lightly touched on HCPCS, -HC HCPCS, ICD-10 codes when asking providers for the diagnosis as to why they needed the medication and ensuring it was listed in the prior authorization. I also have done verification and research clients insurance information. My question is, is it the same for medical billing and coding compared to the position that I was doing or is it different? It is completely different. What you're doing in prior authorizations is verifying to make sure that every, all the documentation lines up with what they're requesting. Okay or if their insurance will cover that. It is, that is something completely separate from medical coding. Medical coding involves looking at the record or looking at the encounter and seeing what diagnosis were treated or assessed or addressed 
and what procedures were done, okay, and what evaluation management level, if any, was done. So that's that's a, that's a huge difference between the two. It, in medical coding, you're abstracting or you're you're basically selecting the codes yourself. Sometimes you are um, you're reviewing the the doctor's pre-selected codes to make sure that they are correct. Uh, sometimes they are not correct, and you have to correct the diagnosis uh, or the procedure selection so that way that it's it's appropriate to what happened on that on that visit. Um, again, it's it's completely completely different. Prior authorizations totally different. Uh, that is. It's night and day difference, basically. It's it's like saying if a, a medical biller and a medical coder does the same thing, nope. They do something completely different. The coders work with the providers, the um, billers work with the insurance companies. I mean, again, it's night and day. Uh, me medical billers are not going through and looking at uh, documentation the same way that uh, medical coders are, okay? So the next question, in which goes along with that. Uh, I also see that taking courses for medical billing and coding could help you get into medical records. Is that true? It's, it's opposite of what the viewer asked. Okay, so if you want to get into medical coding, okay, you can start your career in medical records. It's, it's not that you need education at all to get into medical records. Medical records, you don't need a certification. You don't need to take a course or anything. You basically just apply. If you have a high school diploma or a GED, oftentimes that's all you need. So uh, medical records is dealing with medical records. They're the ones that are like, you know, putting things together or they're the ones that are, are uh, getting when the patients come in requesting their medical records. They're the ones to make sure that all this stuff is there, or they're verifying that that is in fact the person that is coming in to get the records, or if they're being requested records from like insurance companies or um, you know maybe other other agencies, they're the ones that are taking care of that. That is that is not medical coding, and um, you, again, you don't have to be certified for that. That is just basically a function in the hospital. Okay, it's a, it's a clerical function in the hospital. Uh, but if you want to get into medical coding and you're trying to look for a job and you, you apply to be a medical records tech, right? Somebody that does that, that will put you in a good position to be around the people that are going to be hiring for medical coding. So then that way you can make your connections that way. A lot of people have started their careers in medical records and moved on to being a medical coder. So that. It, it, it was there, but it was the opposite of the way it was listed. So, but yes, that is the deal behind that. Okay. Next question. What would prevent you from getting hired? So if you have your certification, right? And um, now you're out and about and you're looking for a job. What, what are the things that could prevent you from getting hired? Uh, well, obviously let's take no experience off the table. Okay, let's just take it off the table for a second. What else, right, would prevent you from getting hired right away? Um, if you uh, have a criminal history. Now, if your criminal history uh, is going to depend, because you guys know if you have a criminal history, it's not going to automatically count you out. It's going to depend on what the nature of the crime was. That's number one. Number two, it's going to depend how long ago was it adjudicated, because there is a difference between somebody who is 16 and stole a car and somebody who committed like identity theft. Okay. Identity theft, you're looking at never, never, ever being able to do this because of the simple fact that we work with sensitive patient information and those kinds of crimes, they, they, this, when you're working in an environment like this, it's impossible because, uh, we, we work in trust positions. That's what they're called as trust positions. Uh, some, some is called public trust. Okay. So whenever you are, are exposed to a lot of information that is sensitive, like, uh, people's uh, personal private information, they're going to look for people that are trustworthy and that can be able to pass these background checks because you will get a background check. Um, and if you have a criminal history and it's, it's something involving that, then, you know, that's not something that's looked on very well. Uh, also, like violence is another one that's not looked on too kindly either because you're working in a hospital environment, you know. Um, so those are some of the things that, that would prevent you from getting hired. Um, 
again, it's going to go on the nature of, of your crime and, and how long ago it was adjudicated. Always be upfront because they're going to find out about it anyway. And the other thing is if you are on drugs, if you, if you, when you go, when you go, because, uh, you will be drug tested when you go and you uh, take a drug screen. And if you can't pass cause you pop pot on it, well, I mean, that's, that's a reason for them not to hire you either. Um, with, with some states, I know that, that um, cannabis is legal now in some states does not mean that in a hospital setting that it is accepted. Uh, you have to consider that you are working in a hospital or you're working for a doctor's office. They're not going to look too kindly on you if you are, you know, on drugs or something. So uh, even tobacco use is a no-no. Uh, I work in a tobacco-free campus. So there's a hospital that's a few miles up the road from me and they absolutely do not allow anybody to use any kind of tobacco at all uh at my facility you just can't do that on the premises that what you do in your own private time is your own business uh, when it comes to tobacco but uh with the other facility even when you are away from the facility you cannot and they will test you for tobacco because that is their rules so some facilities are like that some are not so it's really going to depend but if you are on any other kind of drugs uh you really need to think about it because your mind needs to be clear when you are doing medical coding. Think about it. What you select and what you, what you, the, the things that you select, the, the diagnosis and the procedures, it's going to follow the patient in their medical record. Okay. And think about it. If you're selecting the wrong thing, you could potentially impact the patient unknowingly because you were under the influence. So that's another thing to consider. A patient may end up having to pay too much or too little for the services that were provided to them. So now you've done a financial impact on the facility and the patient. So that is something to keep in mind. You have to be clear headed when you are doing these things. And that this is for intellectuals and this is for people who think and who are detail oriented. Um, this is not for, you know, if, if hey, if I want to do this on the weekend and then I come in and, and I'm OK. No, it, it doesn't matter. Because if you can take a urinalysis and or a drug screen, a blood blood test, and it comes up with something that that's on there that's not supposed to be, then you've just wasted everyone's time. Okay, so just consider that before you you want to consider this field or before you do anything like that. Okay, I'm just saying I'm being real. So if you don't like it, that's okay. Uh, but I'm just saying somebody needs to tell you the truth. That's the truth. Next question. Um, hmm. Oh, can you please take the time to show us or tell us uh, what do the assessments look like? So the assessment tests that I've talked about on, on my previous videos, like when you are applying for jobs and they're giving you an assessment test, they're going to be different every place you go. It is impossible for me to give you guys any sort of clue as to what is on there. I, I can't. Um, when it comes to these assessment tests, I've seen them. I've seen tests that were 25 questions and it was like maybe five scenarios and the rest were multiple choice questions. And then I've, I've applied for places that it was 50 questions and it was like 10 scenarios and then it was multiple choice and then it was then you fill in, you know. So it's going to be different every single place you go there. It is impossible for me to show you guys uh, what an assessment test is going to look like because every place is going to be different. So you just have to be uh, continuing to study. You have to be continuing to look at your books. It's, even if you are still in the process of looking for a job, you still have to continue to study. Okay. Uh, so that way you can be prepared. Next question. Uh, do we use coding software or books to get the codes? When you are studying and when you are going to take your certification exams, you will only use your books. You will not use an encoder. An encoder is the coding software and that is for when you are in the workplace, okay? Because then it's not gonna matter, right? Uh, when, once you have your certification, um, but you can only use the encoder when you are working. And if you are studying, I would strongly recommend that you continue to use your books and not an encoder because it's not going to help you when you are going to go take your certification exam and you need to be quick. Okay. So I'm just saying next question. 
Can you talk about other certifications that could make you more income? Worry about getting your cert your first certification first, and then you can worry about other certifications that get you more income. Next question. As an RN with seven years of experience, how long do you think education process should take? When it comes to nurses who want to be medical coders, um, welcome. But the thing is, I've seen nurses, because I've trained them before, I've seen nurses who really get it, and I've seen nurses who don't get it. So it really is going to depend on the individual. It's going to depend on how, how quickly you grasp it. Because a lot of times nurses will say, oh, well, I've done coding before. Oh, really? So, so what did you do? Well, yeah, we had this whole list of codes and we had this list of procedures and we just put them in. No, not the same. So what, what it means to be a coder is you're reviewing and then you are adding the diagnosis, you're adding the procedure codes, or you're verifying to make sure that what is already selected is correct. It's completely different from somebody who has a list of pre-selected diagnosis and a pre-selected um, list of procedure codes completely different. So it really is going to depend on the individual, however, however quickly you learn. And the thing about nurses is you, you guys have a good grasp of like anatomy, physiology, medical terminology. That's, that's your good foundation. Okay. So you really know, but you still have to understand the differences between the coding and the procedure coding and the diagnosis coding. So, so it's a lot of rules. Again, it's going to go back to the individual. Um, the next question, suppose I have a specific CPT code. Is there some place that shows all the diagnosis codes that are eligible mat to match that specific, uh, CPT code? Uh, yes, it is called the coding companion and they have those books on optum 360 codingcom This is not an ad, but I love optum 360 coding. They have all the little books that are so fun for us medical coders and it they do have those coding companions and it is broken down by subject is broken down by specialty and it will give you all the lists of all the procedure codes plus the diagnoses that go with them plus the rvu generation that you can get from those and then it gives you brief descriptions and it gives you all kinds of good information so trust me those books are totally worth it <laughs> um if you if you are using it as a reference, you can get the prior year uh, books because it's still essentially the same. Uh, if you if you're just trying to look to see what diagnosis codes go with that particular procedure code, and then you're wanting to know about that proce particular procedure code, uh, you can use the the year before uh, just to just to use it as a reference. But yes, check out optin360coding.com. Uh, look on eBay or Amazon and see if you can find the coding companion for whatever specialty that it is. Okay. Um, next question. What is a Chinese wall? Can you explain? Um, so that's the last question of the day. So I speak a lot of times in idioms. Okay. Uh, so when I say a Chinese wall, a Chinese wall, the definition of a Chinese wall is an insurmountable barrier, especially to the passage of information or communication. So essentially when I say I have to have a Chinese wall up, I am keeping what is going on like in my education. I usually, when I say that, I say that because of my education. When I'm going through stuff with my own personal education, I say that I have to have a Chinese wall up and I don't bring it on YouTube because of my own personal process. If I was to tell you guys what's going on with my education in the back, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions and I don't want to distract myself with those questions. I want to keep what's going on with me in that regard to myself um, because I'm not ready to bring it out just yet. So that's why I say I have to have a Chinese wall. There's a barrier there. Okay. So my private life when it comes to my education is, is, is kept to me and then everything else is for you guys. So when I do say things, a little idiom like that, it just means the Chinese wall. It just means that, that that's a wall that I put up there uh, so that I can keep all of that information for me until I'm ready to share it with all of you. Okay. <laughs> so yes, that, that is, that is what I, <laughs> that is what a Chinese wall is. So, uh, 
Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. But if you are interested in any uh, coding quizzes or any sort of breakdowns with uh, medical coding, I do that on my Patreon channel. It is uh, Patreon slash Medical Coding with Blue. I have starting uh, pledges that start at $1 per month and you get access to all of that. Uh, I hope you'll join me there. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. So if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all on the next video. Bye.